Welcome to the Software Carpentry screencast on databases. In this screencast, we will show you how to combine values from multiple rows. This is called aggregation. Suppose we wanted to know how many hours were spent on all experiments so far. First, we need to fetch all of the hours in the table, which we can write like this. To add up all of the hours, all we need to do is apply the sum function to the hours column. sum is one of the aggregation functions in SQL. In their simplest form, aggregation functions are applied to all of the rows fetched by a query, and they reduce the result to a single row, as you can see here. min, max, and average are also aggregation functions. You can use them like sum, and they'll do what you expect. They compute the maximum, minimum, and average of your results. Another handy aggregation function is count. If you'd like to know how many records are returned by your query, you write select count. The use of the asterisk, or star here, is an idiom that is used because we are interested in counting the number of records, not of counting anything in a particular column. What if we want the total number of hours each scientist has worked so far? One way is to use a WHERE clause to single out specific scientists. We could write sum of the hours from the experiment table, where login ID, and then give some scientists login ID. The problem with this approach is that we'd have to write one query for each scientist. We only have a few scientists in our table, but imagine if we had hundreds. What we want to be able to do is to have the database return a row for each scientist and include a sum of the hours they have worked. But this query returns a single row, not one for each scientist. And also, why does it return that particular login ID? Let's take a look at the same query without the sum aggregate function. When we use sum, the database was collapsing all of these rows by summing the hours column. But since we haven't specified an aggregation function for the login ID column, the database just picks an arbitrary login ID and returns it. So if your query selects fields directly from a table, like login, and aggregates at the same time, like when we used sum, the values for the unaggregated fields, like login, can be any value in all of the records being aggregated. So, if we want the total number of hours each scientist has worked so far, we need to tell the database to aggregate the hours for each scientist separately. We can do this using the group by clause. So, we select the login ID and the sum of the hours from the experiment table, but we want our aggregation done for each scientist. So we group by the login ID. Since we're grouping by the login ID, we know that the rows in each group have the same login ID, so it's safe to select the login ID column here without getting unexpected results. If we want, we can group by multiple criteria at once. So for example, if we wanted the number of hours each scientist had spent on each project, we would group by both the login ID and the project, and then we'd add the project ID to the select clause so that we know which project the hours belong to. The group by clause here specifies that all of the rows that have the same login and project name are grouped together, and then the sum is done for each one of those groups. The other aggregation functions, like min, max, count, and so on, work in the same way. So for instance, to calculate how many experiments each scientist has done for each project, we could add the count to our select clause. Sorting and filtering can also be done on queries that aggregate data. For example, if we want the total number for example, if we want the total time spent on each project sorted by project name, select the project and the sum of the hours and then we want this for each project so we group by the project and then we want to sort the results by the project name the order by clause always goes after the group by clause because we are ordering the results of the aggregation it wouldn't make any difference to order the data before it was aggregated what if we wanted to sort the results by the number of hours spent Instead of using a plain field to sort on, like project, we can use an aggregate function as our sorting criterion. 
Here we are sorting the results, not by a field from the experiments table, but by the results of an aggregation function computed on the data from the experiments table. What if you wanted to remove the negative hours and only add up the positive values? You can do this by adding a WHERE clause to the query to filter out values you don't want before they are grouped and aggregated. So we could say, select the project on the sum of the hours from the experiment table, but only include those rows where we have a positive value in our hours column. Notice that we can read the query as a series of steps in the same order that they are written. That is, first the data is selected from the table, those results are filtered by the WHERE clause, and then what is left over is aggregated, and finally the aggregated results are sorted. This query nicely sums up everything we've covered in this lecture. In this screencast we've demonstrated how aggregation functions like sum and count can be used to perform calculations on multiple rows. We've also talked about how to group your data and aggregate over those groups using the group by clause. As well, we've talked about how filtering and sorting can also be used in conjunction with aggregation.